Why is it that stone animals, humans, and hybrid monstrous creatures line the walls of beautiful cathedrals like Notre Dame? I believe the answer to this question explains why in Disney's Hunchback of Notre Dame, the protagonist Quasimodo is friends with grotesques, while the antagonist, Claude Frollo, is terrified and killed by one. A grotesque is an ornamental, like the ornaments we hang on Christmas trees. They have no utilitarian function, unlike gargoyles, which do. The word gargoyle comes from the French gargouille, which means throat. Now think of the word goggle or gutter, and you'll begin to see the function of a gargoyle. They're water spouts, channeling water away from the building, usually through the mouth. But apart from this utilitarian rinsing, the gargoyles share a deeper purpose with the grotesques. In their appearance, they are often shocking, since they are meant to scare evil away from the church. So let's focus in on this word, apotropaic. It means to turn away or to ward off evil. Whenever we make the sign of the cross or say a prayer in the middle of the night because we've had a bad dream or heard a noise in the corner, there seems to be some deep impulse within us to ward off evil by seeking the comfort of the true, the good, and the beautiful. To worship evil is folly, but the desire to ward it off is human. With this in mind, we see that gargoyles and grotesques expand this deeply human impulse and embed it into stone. Gargoyles are thereby apotropaic in nature, the very stones that cry out. In Disney's Hunchback of Notre Dame, the main antagonist, Claude Frollo, appears completely righteous to himself, seeing sin everywhere except within. Outwardly, he conveys the authority of his office as a judge for the betterment of society, but inwardly seeks only self-elevation. In the beginning of the film, Frollo kills Quasimodo's mother on the steps of Notre Dame. Frollo takes one look at the baby she was protecting and then, in shock, declares Quasimodo to be a monster before deciding to kill him. As Frollo is poised to drop the baby into the well, the Archdeacon intervenes, and then the statues and grotesques which adorn Notre Dame gaze down upon Frollo, the moment climaxing with Frollo looking up at the statue of Mary, the Mother of God, herself holding the baby Christ. Because of this, for once in his life of power and control, he begins to feel a twinge of fear for his immortal soul. The statues, through apotropaic fear, ward the mortal sin of murder away from Frollo's heart, saving Quasimodo's life. Much of the film plays with this contrast between external appearance and internal state. The talking grotesques, while made of stone, do have hearts of care and encouragement. Esmeralda, a persecuted outcast and a gypsy, finds sanctuary in the church and sees her own situation reflected in the life of Christ. Frollo, who appears to be a man, is a monster. But Quasimodo, who appears a monster, is a real man, capable of immense strength and immense gentleness. And it is because of his Christ-like nature that the grotesques do not scare him away, but befriend him. But Quasimodo is Christ-like not only in temperament, but also in his relationship to society. He longs to enter the world, he loves the people he sees below, but fears they will reject him. In like manner to Christ, he is innocent and separated, but seeks communion with humanity. Upon finally entering the festival, Quasimodo is cheered for because of his mask. But when the crowd sees who and what he is, he is betrayed by that same humanity he entered into. He is mocked and insulted and humiliated right after being crowned. Esmeralda stands up to the crowd and Quasimodo then begins to fall in love with her, 
Esmeralda must eventually seek safety in Notre Dame. She must seek sanctuary. In medieval times, secular laws that would lead to the arrest of someone could not be enforced inside of the church walls because it's sacred space. Throughout the film, Frollo reluctantly obeys this law. He reluctantly submits to the rule of sanctuary. At the climax of the film, Frollo becomes fully consumed with pride and crucially ignores and disregards this sanctuary law. The church and God, instead of being the way, have now become an obstacle in his way. Through his actions, he ignores the sacred, disregards what is holy, and then thinks himself judge, jury, and executioner. In that moment, he is satanic, fully possessed by the very evil that the gargoyles scare away. Beata Maria, you know I am a righteous man. Of my virtue I am justly proud.